<laughs> I think we are live. Live and kicking again. Yay! Hello. Hello, everyone. Rika here with some guy on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, though. It's not incorrect. It's true, though. Yeah, no, no. It's true, true. It's true. But, yeah. Okay. True, Welcome true. everyone who is watching this and I hope you will have a blast as much as fun as I will have because it's going to be so much fun. So this is what's going to happen today. Uh, we're going to wait a few minutes and please, please, everyone, tell us where you're from because that makes it much more interesting and real for me and Martin uh, today to see who we're talking to and uh, who's actually listening in. And uh, a few minutes in, uh, we are going to have a guest who, who's helping me out a bit. I'm going to have like help with this. Um, but I'm going to be able to ask a lot of questions. And I'm also going to be able to ask your questions. So please, please put them in the chat and I'll ask them for you. Um, and hopefully we can answer your question. They have to be good, though. They have to be relevant and good, you know, on spot and topic etc so no my my website yada yada but you know real good questions um so martin do you want to introduce yourself or should i uh well i'm, I'm just curious how you would introduce myself so okay. you you do that so this is martin split everyone the nicest guy on internet that i know yeah you're super nice and super knowledgeable he, he works at some company called google and uh, with a team uh, that's also super, super nice. And you guys do a lot of cool stuff for us SEOs and web owners, don't you? I'm trying at least. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we're actually, you have to introduce yourself properly because okay, you, I fine. think you have one. Fine. So uh, my name is Martin Split. I am a developer relations engineer on the uh, search relations team at Google. I'm based in uh, Switzerland, in Zurich, uh, together with Lizzie, Gary, and John, who you might also know or might have been in contact with at some point um, in your career. And uh, I'm coming to you from the very, very warm and sunny Zurich right now. So uh, yay, it's summer. And uh, yeah, we're here to talk a little bit about rendering today. We are indeed. Do you want to introduce me? I would also like to Ooh, hear yeah, how you would a, do that. That's an interesting one. So um, our host today is Ulrika Wieberg. She's from Sweden and she is a true unicorn. She does a lot of different things. She has many different talents. Witty, fun, and always a good sport. Um, Ulrika is the middle of the party, even if she doesn't necessarily like that. And uh, <laughs> today she'll guide us through this webinar. Oh, thank you. That, I, I don't want to add anything. That's, that uh -huh. was fantastic. That was perfect. There you go. Uh, I, also, I also run an, an agency called Unicorn. So that, that's where the unicorn comes from. Um, <laughs> We do SEO, but we also do analysis, web analysis, and other things like, yeah, web stuff, products. Um, so, yeah, I've been doing SEO for a long time and technical SEO to that. So that's why we are here. So later today, uh, later tonight, in a few minutes, um, we are going to be also joined by Jamie, the 100% human, but acts like a bot sometimes. So I, I, I really, I really am really looking forward to that. And I know that she has some interesting things she wants to add to this conversation. So, um, yeah. Sure she will. All right. Okay. So there's so much popping in in the in the chat. I can't really, I can't really good follow stuff. They're, everything. They're from everywhere, and they everywhere. Uh... I there's, love that. There's love and excitement for you. I see Hans. And, uh, there's like a bunch of uh, tech <laughs> geeks here. And it's, it's, oh, nice. it's a nice group. It's a lovely group. Hello, everybody. We're going to have so much fun then. Geeking we out, taking out. We were. So we were. can we please make this maybe one of the techiest webinars this year? Uh, that when depends it comes to on CEO the audience least. and the questions. And, <laughs> yeah, but in general, sure. Sure, sure. Okay, let, let's try fine. for it at least. Let's try mm -hmm. for it. 
Um, so I think right. we're good to start, actually. I think people have logged in uh, who are going to be logged in. So uh, I want to I want to kick off immediately with like with what is rendering, Martin? What happens when oh, rendering happens? Oh, key And also I encourage and invite our audience to tell us if we are too boring and too basic or if it's mm. too much yes, because this this can go either way. So rendering very fundamentally is um, so rendering is a huge thing and fundamentally in computer science rendering means taking data in one form and outputting it in a different form and that can be a lot of things most of the the things that are uh, associated with rendering is in computer graphics outputting some sort of graphics so you have a bunch of matrices so a bunch of numbers um, and then what you want is colors on a two-dimensional grid aka a screen and um, in our specific case, rendering means, yeah, co coloring for computers with crayons. Yeah, uh, with crayons. Yes, that's that's pretty exact, <laughs> exactly. And in, in our industry, in our specific field, um, if you have a website, that website is usually done in HTML, and that HTML is just a text format, but we're not looking at just the raw HTML text, but we're actually looking at something interactive. And this interactive collection of elements that lives in your browser and changes as you click on things and scroll through things and type things in, um, that is the rendered version of that website. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. OK, so uh, when it comes to rendering and all things website, uh, uh, DOM is key. Mm -hmm. So uh, a little bit like uh, you, I have heard you explain the DOM uh, bunch of times so maybe but but that is of course just as rendering a thing to understand but i think that yeah very very briefly what is the dom maybe right. just like right so um if you think about it the, if you're in the kitchen and you have a recipe and um you read through that recipe and you're grabbing the individual ingredients then the DOM is more or less that set of ingredients or even the prepared dish, depending a little bit on which stage of, of the thing you're in. If you think about that process, you have a list of ingredients and steps to prepare. That's your recipe. That is kind of the HTML source code that your server generates. And then as you go through that piece of paper that is a very dumb thing and it's a very atomic thing because it's just this one piece of paper and you read through the ingredients list, what you're doing is you're parsing, you're understanding what am I looking at. So I'm, I have a piece of butter, I have a bit of cheese, I have a few chives, I have a few onions, whatever. And then the assembly steps are kind of like also the HTML that we come from. So there's the mm. metaphor falls short a little bit, but fundamentally you then have to assemble these things and the assembled thing is what has been rendered. So the DOM yeah. is this intermediate stage of I know what I need for, to prepare this recipe and I'm starting to assemble it and I have it assembled, but it's not baked yet. It's not ready yet for consumption. Um, and that's that's more or less the mental model of the browser is how I say it. So if I were to describe something to you um, or if we are doing like mental pictures, picture, if you will, a green field and on this green field is a house. The house is... Uh, red brickwork and it has two stories and each story has two windows and there's a window on the ground floor and there's a door on the right side of the ground floor window and there's a little chimney on the right hand side the picture that you have in your head that's the dom and you mm. could now go and paint that picture and depending on how much of the story i told you at this point or mm. if i'm changing the story at some point then this picture will change and the picture that you've painted won't change right so if yeah. i told you what i just told you 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 draw that and then yeah. I say, actually, there's uh, now the, the window on the left-hand side on the upper floor is open. And you'd be like, mm. ah, damn. So you would have to like erase a bit of your painting and actually draw in an open window. And, and then eventually I say, and now there's a person in that window waving at us. And you'd be like, mm. ah, damn. So you would erase a little bit and then actually draw the little person. And that's pretty much what the browser does all the time. You click on something, it expands the section or you scroll or you, well, actually scrolling is a bad example for interesting reasons, but you do stuff <laughs> that changes the content. And yeah. that's pretty much, that's pretty much what changes the DOM first. It changes your mental model first. And then eventually the browser renders it out and changes what you see on screen. So is that what you're, when you're talking about uh, DOM snapshots, is that mm -hmm. this different scenarios? And, Absolutely. um, 
and you guys, when you render the, the page or the DOM snapshot, you index it. But what happens if for some reason uh, you are getting the wrong one and index yeah. the wrong one? How can you how can you mess up as a web owner no, to make that I, happen? I'll throw, I'll throw that question back to you in a slightly different form. When do you okay. take that snapshot? When do you know that it's ready? Yeah, I don't know when it's yeah. when it's not loading anymore. But then, if you interact with it, then it changes. Mm -hmm. So it's a new snapshot. Mm -hmm. But as Google or any, I guess, mm -hmm. search bot yeah. is not actually interacting. So I guess that that happens when the snapshot is or the ren the DOM is rendered without any interaction. That's when the snapshot. Okay. So that's okay. how I understand it. So tell me, okay. please, if I'm wrong. It is more complicated than that because it, okay. it's actually a really good starting point. It's a really, really good starting point. So fundamentally, you could say, OK, so I make my initial request and I, I get the DOM from when I have loaded whatever needs to be loaded. Mm. And then whenever I've done that, then um, I'm done. There's a bunch of problems with that. So let's assume a very simple website one that has uh, a few HTML elements and like an image and uh, it needs to download the image from the internet, then I could take a DOM snapshot even before I load the image because it doesn't really matter. Um, oh, yeah. as, as long as we don't care for the actual pixels and pro tip, Google really does not care about the actual pixels. Oh. Um, no, it, it doesn't. It's pointless for us. What we are interested in is where are the elements, what are the prominent elements, where do they live? Um, and uh, and what elements are there? It doesn't really matter if they're green or blue or black. Um, yeah, of course. Th that's pretty pointless for us. But yeah. yeah, so fundamentally, we don't care for the actual painting. Uh, painting is actually pretty expensive when you want to do it on a, on a computer. You want to do that with a GPU, with a graphics processing unit. These are very expensive, not just because crypto mining and uh, AI is using GPUs to do its thing. But yeah. actually, it's just expensive and it, it takes a lot of mm -hmm. time. So we don't care. So for a simple website, once I have the initial HTML and I have everything loaded and the server doesn't respond with anything anymore, we are done. Now we introduce a piece of JavaScript and things get weird because now the problem there is that this JavaScript can do stuff, mm -hmm. right? It, it can exactly. go and actually say like, OK, so here. I'm, here's a JavaScript, we load that, and then we take the DOM snapshot. But then the JavaScript eventually executes, and then it changes the text of the heading, or it uh, adds new text that wasn't there before, that is hidden in the JavaScript, and so on and so forth. So you would have to wait for the JavaScript to finish executing. And it gets worse than that, because the JavaScript, in turn, might make... Actually, you know what? We can actually why let's let's do this like Bob Ross would do it probably. Um, I'll yep. open the website and uh, can we share my screen real quick because please, I think that do. might be actually the easiest way to do that. I like that. Uh, so let's see. Do I have to? No, I don't have to log in. That's nice. So I can just do it here and I'll zoom in a little bit so we can all see what's happening. Uh, hey, chat, your job is to tell me if you can read the source code once the source code here is loaded and we can actually start doing stuff. I didn't anticipate on this is this is real. We we I was like, and Ulrika wanted to know where this is going. And I was like, we'll see where the flow takes us. This is where <laughs> the flow takes us. Neither me nor her did know five minutes ago that this is what would happen. But so you this should, share this now. Huh? This should this should look more or less familiar, I hope. That we do have a uh, website here that has a bunch of content. And actually, you know what? I don't like this content, so we're just going to remove this content because all of this is boring. And then we go in here, and we actually, you know what? We're going to go old style, so we're going to remove the CSS as well because we don't need styles because no one wants styles. Ah, shit, this is a Swiss German keyboard. I haven't typed on a Swiss German keyboard in a while. Ah, here we go. Hello, Duda webinar lovers, and then we do slash h1. Oh, it has, okay, nice. That's very lovely. And uh, I think we have like some assets by default, if I remember correctly. Oh, well, an illustration picture. SVG, yeah, but I can't be asked. Okay, whatever. So I think there's, I think there's a thing. Um, I don't know if that still exists, but let's say like it does. Place kitten.com and I think it's like 500 500 or something and then I should get out 
equals oops a very cute kitty all right fantastic alt text not let's um, hope that this is a cat that you're gonna show I, I do i do hope so as well i'm i'm brave like that okay there oh, we go okay. it's a cat oh, there we go fantastic yeah. So this this is a really really easy website to deal with. Switch no don't no go away. Um, actually let me make that bigger real quick. I hope I can do it on a. Swiss and we do see the inspection tool. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like tiny and I can't zoom yeah. in. Um, <laughs> fantastic. Oh, I can. Here we go. Can you? Go. Hey, chat. Can y'all read that? I hope. That. Yeah, it looks like a lot of people's pr uh, private websites. No worries about that, Patrick. So here, this is actually <laughs> what the browser uses to make this website happen on our screen, right? So this is the DOM. Mm -hmm. There's no good way to show that, really, because effectively what it is is a bunch of ones and zeros and computer's memory. So uh, instead, Chrome chose, and actually most browsers choose to show it as HTML. But really, as you can see here, like we can expand and we can uh, yeah. collapse and individual things. So this is more or less like the real actual representation. You can tell that the browser can tell you if I'm hovering over this, it actually shows the actual headline. And if I'm hovering over the image, it actually does that. And if I am going in here and say, uh, I don't know, let's say, uh, let's make it like this and make that like that. And I click on it and it actually loads a new image. So I can edit the DOM. And the cool thing is the moment this website appears, the DOM is there and it can't change. And if I'm clicking on mm. the network tab, uh, we are seeing that as well. If I'm just loading it, we just get like the, uh, the actual, oops, we actually get the actual page. We get the, mm. the, uh, the image that we just loaded. And then, and then that's it. That's that's all that happens. So the DOM is a very static thing, and I could basically say like, okay, cool. The DOM equals the original uh, HTML that I programmed. Nice. So mm. if I wanted to take a snapshot, I can take a snapshot the moment the DOM has been created. That's really yeah. really easy. I could go here and say, like, okay, give me document. Um, Oh, is it called document element? Yes, it is document element dot outer HTML. And then I get a pretty ugly version of the HTML that I just typed in. It, it doesn't look pretty, but fundamentally, this is a DOM snapshot, right? And I can mm -hmm. work with that. I could pass this on, or I could snapshot it directly from memory. That is a little trickier to do, but fundamentally, I can. Now, let's make this a little more complicated. Let's actually create a script down here. For now, we make that relatively simple. Um, we just go document body append child, and we're just going to say p, and then we create p. Um, so JavaScript, Jesus Christ, JavaScript has access to the document, uh, so to the DOM, and we can basically do whatever we want. And I choose to create a paragraph, and mm. I can actually let's just do this. And I can go and say, like, this is a, oh, God, where is everything on this keyboard? This is more text. It wasn't in, oh, was not in the original HTML, which is technically a lie because it totally was, because it is yeah. in the initial HTML. But now as we load the website again, there's some more text. And if we look at the original source, at least in the body, there was no text directly. There was no paragraph. But now in the DOM, surprise, surprise, there is. Mm -hmm. We, could, sti yeah, we could still just do that. We could still take a DOM snapshot right away, right? It's, it's there. It's right here. When we're yeah. finished with that, it's right there. So let's say, let's, let's build ourselves a web rendering service by what does the web rendering service do? What, needs, what, what is needed for Google Search to work with this? Very simple. Ah, we can just um, we can just take a DOM snapshot and then work with that for indexing, and that's what we need to do. So this is this is now this is Googlebot lol. And what we do is we do exactly that. We do console log so that outputs something into the the console in the dev tools, and we go document dot document element element dot. Um, dot outer html and then that's it right and if we do yeah. that if we load this website now our dumb snapshot looks 
pretty good. Like the, oh, interestingly enough, that here's the paragraph. So mm. we have a complete DOM snapshot. Problem freaking solved. Mm. Except it isn't. Because we can make this more complicated. We can, for instance, say we want to do something after a while. We want to run this thing here, this code that we put in here. Not immediately, but after, I don't know, five seconds. So now we have a bit of a problem. Because as you can see, the paragraph is now missing. Yeah. But in the okay. DOM, it is here because we just needed to wait five seconds. <laughs> and there it is. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay, so, so what happens then? Yeah. What would you say? Well, we just wait. It's easy, right? We just wait. Yeah, but does, uh, does actually Searchbot do that? Does Googlebot wait, wait until the full... Till it's like, does it does it really sense that that and wait? Ignoring Googlebot for a second, you are now building a Googlebot rendering thing. How mm -hmm. long do you wait? Not five seconds. I don't think so. Mm. Do I? I think I lost. I, I don't know. I have a very really short attention span. Five seconds is too much. I think I I, I just look know. at it where it is and then move on. Okay, but. If we just do it immediately and move on, then a lot of stuff is just lost, right? Okay. Because yeah. I mean, this is this is this is a simple case. This is us waiting for something, but maybe I want to uh, display a Chuck Norris joke, and I think like where was a Chuck Norris joke API? Um, there's a Chuck Norris jokes API that you can do. Please tell me that I don't need to do weird stuff here and I can just access. Ah, no, I, I probably can't access it because it probably doesn't do. Please tell me that you do course. Because we are fetching this from a different server. So if we're lucky, it actually gives us. Oh, no, I need a network. Shit. Uh, clickety click. Please tell Simon, me. That you Simon do. says, I might wait five seconds if I wanted to show something. I didn't want Google to index. I, I'm with Simon here. Okay, yeah, good idea. But the problem is that won't work. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Damn it, I can't use that API because it actually, actually, no, I can't use that API because yeah. it comes from a different server and it doesn't do course. Does course proxy still work? That's a, that's a completely orthogonal problem. Who here in the chat has ever had to deal with course problems? I wonder because I'm pretty sure that number is larger than zero. Course. <laughs> This is starting to look like your Twitch. It starts to look like Twitch because it's funky, isn't it? Okay. Um, so, okay. Aha. Okay. So, the course proxy.io exists. That's fantastic. So, I could hypothetically, hopefully, if I am lucky, then I can just use this URL. So, what we are doing is we want to show a random uh, Chuck Norris joke down here, right? Yeah. Um, and instead of doing the set timeout magic, we're just going to remove that for a moment and ignore that entirely. But mm -hmm. but we want the text content to come from somewhere. So what we can do is we can ask the browser to do us a favor and fetch some Chuck Norris joke. And I actually have to check what the result is. Categories? No, I don't want categories. It must be value they call it value and that's that's the chuck norris joke okay so in that case um we get some some stuff so this goes to the network and eventually comes back with a response and that response we want to parse this json which conveniently the browser can do that's why the json format is so ridiculously response and this one has a bunch of stuff and we actually want to do something with it and what we want to do is we want the text from our paragraph to come from it. And um, in this case, we remove this. We put it in here. And instead of like, this is more text, blah, 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 what we're going to do is we're going to do response.value is what they called it, I think. And uh, if we are lucky, Chuck Norris finished World of Warcraft. There we go. So as we can see, this is not just me waiting for a moment. This might actually be you loading data from a backend. OK, yeah, OK, I get it. Right? I get it. Yeah. So I okay. don't have a backend. I'm just casually just... Uh, 
downloading data from from a website that has Chuck mm. Norris jokes and um, yeah, but it's an external resource, so yeah, yeah. So this might be my backend. Santa mm. Claus attaches his sleigh to Chuck Norris's jumping sidekick. That's fantastic. I love it. Chuck <laughs> Norris could beat up Will McCullough. I have no idea. But, okay. Anyway, so wow. I um <laughs> some of those are really bad. Um. Okay. Either way, <laughs> wow. Wow, all of that is okay. That at least is outdated. Um, so yeah, uh, okay, our, I understand. Our wonderful screenshot is a, a snapshot. Our wonderful um, DOM snapshot doesn't have it, so that doesn't work. So just waiting for a time doesn't work. Actually, waiting for something to finish is also inefficient if you think about it. Yeah, because some websites are done immediately, and some websites might take two minutes. So do we have mm -hmm. to just wait for, let's say, like for safety reasons, five minutes? Then we just waste time. So what so we do? So how do you decide how long uh, to wait? That's a really good question. So what is happening here with this weird code is, and the same with the set timeout actually is called. Yeah. We are putting something onto the event loop. Now, unfortunately, there is no visualization in the browser that we can use to figure out what's happening in the event loop. Mm -hmm. But effectively, what happens is that everything that happens on a website goes into this event loop. So if I click. You can imagine it to be like a very long queue. Mm. If I click a little guy inside the computer or inside the browser, actually, like queues, and, and if they come to the counter, they go, Hi, I have clicked here. And then the person at the counter, JavaScript, actually does whatever needs to happen. Mm. Scrolling, scrolling the same thing. If I scroll, uh, some some little guy in the computer queues and waits at the end of the queue until it's their turn, and then they go, Hi. I scrolled 25% down, and so on and so forth. And normally, these, these jobs that need to be done by the JavaScript engine or by the, by the browser are really, really fast. Like scrolling doesn't take us long. It, that's a yep. relatively easy task. We just shift everything up or down a little bit, done, problem solved. Um, if we are asking here, go to the network and then come back, what happens is that actually the browser goes onto the network in the background. Eventually, they get a response, and then here is where we queue someone. And they go and say, like, hi, uh, I, I got this thing here. Make it into a JSON object. And then the browser does that and gives it back. And then the next person queues and goes, like, hi, can we take the value from that JSON object and put it into the paragraph and then put that paragraph onto the page? And the JavaScript goes, oh, sure, here, text into the page. There we go. Yeah. So what we can do, and the same with set timeout, if we say like set timeout, we basically put some, some person into the queue that waits like five seconds, lets other people through if necessary, and then eventually goes, hi, I want you to add this paragraph. So what we can do is we can wait until the event queue is empty. OK. So um, that's yeah, what I we mean, do. OK, OK. OK, that's, a, that's an, actually a neat thing to know. Um, mm -hmm. Because yeah, that makes sense. And first time I heard it, so I need to process it a bit. But <laughs> but yeah, that that's um so one thing that I'm also wondering is if you have if you uh in the DOM, I mean the shadow DOM will change. If you have a shadow DOM, you it will change the DOM. Uh and that makes a new snapshot and all of this will happen. So that is not a problem. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we, we make sure that we do get the DOM snapshot whenever the uh, event loop is empty. So when, when your website queues things, and that yeah. happens with, with frameworks all the time, if you build an Angular app, a React app, and a Vue.js app, or whatever app, um, what they effectively do is they put things onto the event loop, and eventually that event loop runs empty. Oh. And then we're like, and snap, this is where we want to be. OK, so people are actually starting to ask questions now. I love that. Excellent. So, or Lovely Dave is asking, do you run idle loops like set timeout faster? I mean, oh, I love that question. Faster? Yes. Uh, yes, we do. Um, because the, and that's okay, that gets into the weirdness of, of web rendering service, and that's a whole different dragon. But yes, the short answer is yes. All right. Time works differently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and someone is asking, what about database? If, there we can use a third party or any database. It will be more helpful in Duda. I don't. I don't, I don't know much about that. Duda. So uh, yeah, that's that's a question for Anton, I guess. It is, or 
But Simon is asking, how can you see when the evade queue is empty? Great question. You can't. Yes. Um, we can because we control the browser. So what you can do is you can oh. fundamentally do a little bit of magic in your, I mean, Chrome is open source or Chromium is open source. Um, mm -hmm. And in there is a lot of the code that, well, not a lot of the, all of the code that does everything in the browser. So uh, if you wanted to do that, you modify the code and make it so that it actually is able to understand when the rendering or the, the event queue is empty and the event loop is done. Mm. So Christian is asking, is there maximum time Googlebot waits? There is. It is ridiculously long. I won't say a number because that number is being tuned pretty much pretty often. And I know that if this yeah. is being recorded, then people will be like, Martin said, and then it's like outdated oh, yeah, in yeah, two of course, weeks. Of course. But the is. number is the number really, 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 really isn't your concern. Yeah. That timeout is not a concern. Because if you're building a website that waits that long, then you have a lot of bigger problems than your SEO. Yeah. Okay. I, I actually want to ask something else, but something differently. So can we jump topic a bit? Mm -hmm. So I saw this uh, talk of yours uh, that you did in Barcelona uh, this summer. And mm -hmm. you you had a fantastic um, presentation about the web wasn't rendering service. It was in Barcelona, service. but it was in Spain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK, yeah. OK, but close to Barcelona. I don't know where, some in Spain. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Sure. For Never a mind. Of, yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's in Spain. Yeah. It was sunny and in people were, were mm -hmm. swimming and stuff. Um, <laughs> uh, can you go more into more depth what the web rendering service is? And you yeah. mentioned something called the pool manager. Oh, God. Uh, yes. And I, you didn't really go into it, and and that yeah. kind of you know stuck with me, and I wanted I want to know what it is because yeah. I, I didn't know if people cared. Let us know in the in the chat if you actually care about these details because I do see at least uh, two more interesting questions. Okay, so, so do you okay? Do you want to go the, with those instead? I think we start with the questions, and then we might jump into the okay. The so bits which one do you want to go with? Either way, I think Raphael's question is an easy one uh, to start with. Um, hello, everyone. Wonderful live session for a single news article page on a news website. Can the delay in indexing be due to, due to JavaScript, even if there's only a little JavaScript on it? No. Um, there might be a delay in discovery if JavaScript hides the link and we need to wait for rendering to do link extraction. But... Uh, <gasps> Surprise. But the, that's the only thing that can be delayed by JavaScript. Uh, rendering itself is pretty small delays uh, in the minutes to seconds area. So no, no. And little JavaScript, if the JavaScript is only adding fluff to it and the, the thing is in the original HTML anyway, then it doesn't really matter either. Awesome. Welcome, Jamie. Welcome to the party. I'm so happy to be here. Fantastic. We are talking about rendering and JavaScript. And Martin has just done some live coding. <laughs> because, why wouldn't was I? Fantastic. because why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? So right. I'm super happy to have you here. Uh, there was one more question that you wanted to answer. Uh, yes, from Christine. Christine. Yes. Could this explain why a JavaScript error browser console message that looped 99k times but then resolved prevented the page from being seen by Googlebot but could be seen in the browser? That's different. Uh, the console messages, meh, whatever. Um, but there are a whole class of errors that can happen in the uh, renderer but not in the browser. And that is for a variety of reasons. We just saw an example where we um, where we used a backend to give us a Chuck Norris joke, right? The browser, because it's operated by a human, most likely anyway, uh, for a given like if you look at me for a given definition of human anyway, um, then uh, then it just makes the request because I as the user requested that, and then uh, it'll happen. However, if it's a robot doing it, so Googlebot uh, or the WRS, the web rendering service, part of Googlebot doing the actual request, then what happens is that we are going through the robots.txt parser. So if this magical API that gives us the Chuck Norris joke has a robots.txt that says bots are not allowed here, mm. then the bot will be like, 
I'm out. I can't contribute. So no. Yeah. And in the in the browser, that's not a problem because there's no robot involved. There's, uh, as I said, a varying degree of human involved. Um, I, mean, I know I'm not a robot. So there you go. That's that's good certainty to have. And um, yeah, so that's that's a difference that you might see. Another thing is that maybe the server that the Chuck Norris jokes are being served from looks at who's asking and goes, ah, Googlebot, I don't like this one. And then just robots or not just decides to not answer or answer differently or block it. CDNs might be like, ooh, this one wants a Chuck Norris joke, but it looks like it's a bot attack, so we'll just not respond. Things like that can happen, and they don't happen mm. in your browser because, surprisingly, you are not looking like a bot to a CDN. Uh, and the bot, surprisingly, does look like a bot to the CDN, which is the whole point of bot detection, I guess. Um, yeah. And then you get different results. That's more likely what happens. I hope that was. So we have one from Amon as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is a, something that is talked about a lot. I see it a lot. There's a content production increases due to AI, putting increasing loads on crawling and rendering. Is it likely that rendering processes might have to be simplified? No. Uh, I don't think so, because my best guess is so we're, we're doing like um, quality uh, detection or, or quality control at multiple stages. And um, most shitty content doesn't necessarily need JavaScript to show us how shitty it is. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> if we catch that it is shitty content before, then we, we skip rendering. Like, what's the point? If we see like, OK, this looks like absolute, like we can be very certain that this is crap. And the JavaScript yeah. might just add more crap than buy. If it's an empty page, then we might be like, eh, we don't know. I mean, people usually don't put empty pages here. So let's at least try to render. And then when mm -hmm. rendering comes back with crap, we're like, yeah, OK, fair enough. This has been crap. So this is already happening. This is not something new. Uh, AI might update. increase the, yeah, uh, it it's might increase CYA. the scale. But <laughs> doesn't, doesn't change that much. Rendering is not the culprit here. Yeah. Awesome. Um, we have one if, um, I, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna misspell yeah. the, mispronounce this one, but Mr. T, let's say that. Um, if Google is choosing a totally different product page as a duplicate and indexing one of them, is that because we have a client side rendered website and is not being rendered correctly? correctly? I depends, maybe it would be, it could be, it could be, could, could um, be that. It could be, but in 90% 90 90 of the cases that are presented to me with that hypothesis, it's not. It is usually yeah. something else. Uh, I've seen it with, as I said, robots.txt being issues. Then technically, it's not really the JavaScript's fault. It's the fault of whoever puts the backend behind robots.txt um, yeah. because it works as intended, and the JavaScript doesn't even get to play its role. So the JavaScript is there. The, the content is not. So yeah. Um, yeah. oftentimes, oftentimes it is uh, other issues, uh, and there's plenty of possible cases. It could be like a server issue. It could be something actually there, there has been uh, in the past situations where our um, content deduplication clustering has been incorrect in making decisions. Uh, it could be uh, the canonical setup is incorrect, uh, and we CDNs, accidentally trust it. If they cache the wrong yes. version. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, caching is a, is a thing that can happen. So that's a really good question. And the answer is, yeah, it depends because you want to make sure that if things are being rendered correctly, that it's not that. And mm. then actually, funnily enough, it's really funny that this question comes today because there was a question submitted to the office hours that I have looked at and they provide, luckily provided a sample URL. And it's my first guess was, oh, this is rendering related. But then I rendered the pages and it was not rendering related. So there's something else at play there. Uh, but it could have been rendering related, but it wasn't in this case. Mm. Awesome. So I I had a bunch of questions about the uh, the uh, web rendering service, but you were not interested in that. So I'm going to pass it on to Jamie. Do you have any interesting questions? Oh, I have great questions. Well, I think they're great. We can vote yeah. by committee here. Yeah. So Martin, we are finally here. We are all the way out of, I think, like 12 mobile get at this point, and the last of the sites are finally moved to mm. mobile first index, which is wild. So a lot of those sites that didn't migrate yet, 
they were complicated beasties and a number mm -hmm. of them got really excited back in 2018 at IO when they're like, you should do dynamic rendering. And I personally love that you've gone through and you've updated the documentation to say explicitly, this is a temporary patch. It is not reasonable to, for you to have twice the stacks and half the visibility. Conditional behaviors mm -hmm. are how we end up with wormholes. Mm -hmm. How do we help guide folks who are still working with dynamic rendering and mm -hmm. have now moved in that final last push over to the brave <laughs> new world? Hey, um, honestly, tough luck. Um, I mean, this, ha this has been, no, seriously, this has been, this, the, the, mo the shift to mobile, ignoring, ignoring Google search for just a second, right? The shift to mobile mm -hmm. from your users, from your potential prospective customers, uh, that human-based initiative has been there for a decade now. Yeah, for a decade at least, and longer. At least. Yes, at, le at least a decade, if yeah. not two. And um, if you've been like, this is a fad, we'll sit this one out. That has been an interesting choice. I know that sometimes people are like strapped for resources, but at, at some point after a decade, it's there must be usually. some amount that's, of... That's stopping yeah. people. There, there, must, no. there must at some point be a an effort or a possibility to revamp things and slowly move towards the right thing. And even if you haven't paid attention, then I would say at least four, five years ago, there were very big, loud warning bells. So many mobile gadgets. And here's, here's the thing that people say, like, yeah, but we were like really strapped for resources and we didn't have the budget. But you then paid a bunch of money for dynamic rendering. It's expensive. <laughs> and, You're keeping twice and, the stack and spending so and, much time trying to troubleshoot because who knows, this thing has a tendency to exist. You're now yeah. into quantum rendering issues. And I remember very vividly when I wrote the original documentation because the, the dynamic rendering is not an idea that I had. That was something that I took over as I joined Google. And, uh, and we said dynamic rendering is a temporary solution is like a workaround yeah. if you have issues with these things pretty much from the get-go yeah. and some people just chose to actively proactively ignore that yeah. and i'm so excited to quote everything about this webinar i, st I still hear that <laughs> can we do this as a solution i still as today this to today yeah. i still hear that yeah yeah i'm like and no no Computers like say the, no. The, the thing is, like, it, it, you can you you can do pretty much everything. You can also just not have a website and and fax p people uh, <laughs> PDF the files or something, or like email them PDF files or talk to them over the phone if they want Catalogs. to know when your re restaurant back. is open or something. Like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Um, you can do everything you want. <laughs> <laughs> Computer said no. Yes. You, you can do anything you want. We are not the the web police, like whatever. You do you, um, yeah, yeah. but you, you'll end up with the results you end up with. And what we learned is we thought, okay, so dynamic rendering might be an easy way out for a short while while you're figuring out your longer-term strategy. And a lot of people told us the problem is we know we're going to relaunch in a year, in two years, in three years for the mobile-friendly version with a responsive version with whatever, um, what can we do as a kind of like band-aid fix to bridge that gap? And then we thought like, well, fair enough. If it's like a temporarily uh, limited solution, uh, it might actually get you through this gap. Mm. Um, and it did. For a lot of people, it works and it still works. And if it works for you, good. Congratulations. I Fantastic. Just do it. But Have the sustainability fun. Um, of your solution. Exactly. Just, just don't come crying to us uh, if it falls over. And... Um, and if you are still on that solution, rethink what you're doing and rethink it from a user's perspective. Because what you've effectively been doing is you have been giving a limited but maybe somewhat better or faster experience to bots. And you have given a less good version. Because if you were convinced that it was fantastic, you wouldn't have hidden it for bots. You would have given it to the bots as well. Um, Unless, unless, and I, there's a caveat, there are still, I think, a few bots that you might be interested in that do not run JavaScript. And I know that the social media share thingamajiggies that have like all the nice little widgets, OGraph and whatnot, um, they might still not run JavaScript. I don't know. I can't speak for them. That's their question to answer. Um, but I remember that 
in 2014, and that's a long time ago, we specifically implemented a web server that dealt with these things for bots. Uh, but we, we gave the full-blown version of the website to Googlebot, and that was not a problem. And that was 2014. So That's cool. Um, you you want to look into your long-term investment strategy and make the right decisions for your users. And then mm -hmm. if you do the right thing for your users, it's our job to make sure that that is also the right thing for Google and search. And we are mm. on on our game there it's we're not 100 percent there yet i do every now and then a question reaches me that goes like for the user it would be better if we did this but that's actually against your guidelines and i'm like oh harsh one that's a tricky one that's a harsh I feel, one yeah. i feel like i asked a good question and i would like to i would like to use that power to ask for follow because you bring up a good question here one is good for the user, but it may deprecate or not deprecate it may negatively impact the experience of googlebot as it renders Great example of that still on that mobile landscape, we're seeing more and more tap to reveal content being used. Um, mm -hmm. so a lot of folks doing that on click, so it's actually not loaded until the interaction mm -hmm. occurs. So how do we handle that in a performant matter? And if we have those folks out there who are still in the world of dynamic rendering and now the time that it takes for Googlebot to render the page is much higher, do they need to be concerned about that? Yes, um, because if... And, and again, the, there's, there's the SEO angle, but there's the user-related angle. If I'm using a keyboard, I yeah. don't click. Uh, depending on your implementation, like the developer has to work twice or three times as hard to actually make it work for everyone, including those who use assistive technology, um, than if they were just to do it right, which in my opinion is to load the content in as soon as you have it. And that might actually be a server-side rendered application uh, right when you create the initial HTML. Or it might be a client-side rendered application that loads content in the background as uh, resources become available, whatever. Um, lazy loading it, is our friend. Lazy, lazy loaded. Lazy loaded yeah. in the background. Have it there, just not show it, and then only expand it when the user wants to interact with it. Because if it's mm. there, I can potentially access it. Screen readers might be able to access it um, properly. Uh, yeah. So. so if we look what matters when it matters, and we use lazy load for things that are not visible, Really, it's the prioritization of what we show when and not so much the, oh, the DOM load time was X. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you, you definitely want to look into that everything is in the, in the DOM, but don't care too much about how long it takes for the DOM to finish loading. Because as we discussed earlier in the, in the webinar as well, um, you, you missed that bit, is that the, the goalpost of when do I measure is a tricky one to figure out. And we are getting increasingly clever about figuring out when to take a, a snapshot. And the timing isn't necessarily on, on your list of priorities to look at. Mm. Good questions. Yeah, Me like. I really like those questions, actually. Um, so we have a few questions from the audience. Uh, Shelly is asking, and I, I, I know the answer to this, but I'm going to let you do it anyways. If URL inspector in Google Search Console is rendering, rendering a page correctly, but Google Cache shows a non-rendered page, is, is this concerning? I love the question. I want to show you why it is not concerning. Uh, let yeah. me share my screen one more time. Yay. And I don't want to sign into Glitch. I want to actually create a new Glitch because I need a funkier one with this one. Holy moly, why, why are these? They, oh, God. They, <laughs> changed, they, they changed their starting points, and I'm like, oh, go away. So He's here always we go. so brave with the, I'm going to do it live, and I love it. Yeah, yeah. He's... Ah, whatever. We, we see something. <laughs> <laughs> ah, whatever. So the, the problem here is that I'm not 100% sure if I can show it to you the way that I want it, because obviously I can't get it indexed as quickly. Um, but, oh, actually, hold on. Can I, ooh, can I have it? Can I, need a, I need a, hold on, React demo app. Um, it's not that easy. I would need something. No, I don't want. No, these apps are stupid. Uh, I want something that shows something and then want to show. Ah, whatever. Um, does anyone happen to have a sample URL for me where that problem occurs and that is fine to show on this webinar? Because then I'm going to show you why it's breaking. I don't have one on the top of my head, but I don't know if I can find an example app that quickly that actually shows what I want to show you. Real world, aka demo, is, the, is that the thing? Does that, 
I'm lucky this actually breaks properly. Let's see. So if I go to google.com and I search for React Redux real world.io, I'm not sure if I'm actually getting a cache link here, but we can try that. If this is conduit, ha. And I can say view in cache somewhere, maybe. In cache. Here we go. So, ta da. Whoa, that's an actually really, really weird one. Uh, that's not what I wanted to see. That's interesting. OK. That's a different problem. That's funky. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> that's we interesting. got a problem, but not we, the we... one we meant to. I think exactly. CVS might still be on Angular. Ha, yes, it there is, we go. It is. Yeah. But here, actually, this is interesting. Here, it actually works. I want to highlight something that is, oh, and then it breaks because it tries to take over. This is beautiful. So this is actually the same problem. This is exactly the freaking same problem. What happens here is if I go and search for it in the cache, um, I am getting to, uh, can, I, can I just do this? And then it does what I wanted to do. Yes. So. Uh, it gets faster. It was slower the first time I tried that, huh? Damn it. I wanted to point out, Arr! OK, it's very fast and breaking, so I can't actually show it properly. But what happens is we are not loading the actual URL. The, the app lives, this web application lives at HTTPS colon slash slash react dash redux dot real world dot IO. When I open it in Google Cache, it loads a different URL. I can't remember what it was, something, something dot googlecontent.com, I think, is the, is the mm -hmm. cache URL. Um, let's see. Does someone? Oh, no. No one. I just put one in the sample. private chat for us. Oh, you put one. Is... Ah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm going to. And it's fine to use Hi. that, right? Cool, 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 cool. I hope it doesn't do a week. Ah, here we go. So we haven't visited whatever the URL is, which is on cbs.com. We went to webcache.googleusercontent.com. Now, let's see what happens in here. So technically, we might see what is on cvs.com and whatever path is behind that. But we are not on that website. We're not. Because mm -hmm. this website might as well have gone belly up. Who knows, right? It might have died. So we are actually going to webcache.googleusercontent.com. That's the website we are going to. And that website loads a specific subpage that dynamically fetches whatever the URL was that you clicked on. And here we have a console error. And hey, look at that. Cross origin opener policy header has been ignored. Now, what does that mean? It means that a part of the website wants to load uh, a, a script. In this case, which script is it, though? That wants to load. I can't. I don't. Ah, it's actually not the script. It's actually the, the HTML itself. So if we go to network and we click on the actual thing, uh, we might see a response header. And here in the response header, so CVS is worried about fraud, mm. rightly so, because fraud is a big online problem. So conveniently, browsers allow the server to specify a few things for security reasons. So if I go to cvs.com, the server there says, I have a policy. I don't allow you to load me into an iframe or some weird stuff. I only allow it to come from, uh, from cvs.com. I don't want to be loaded from somewhere else. So that people trying to exploit users of cvs.com or trick them into putting their password and username into a website that isn't cvs.com but looks like cvs.com. What's the easiest way to get a website to look so like some other website? Just have a frameless iframe that pretty much spans the entire website and then overlay things in the right positions. And et voila, you have a login form that doesn't go to the actual website but actually to your stuff. CVS doesn't allow that. CVS's security team has done a really good job by saying, hey, browser, whenever you're getting a request to open that thing from somewhere that is not CVS.com, don't. That's this error message that we're seeing here. Because we are not on CVS.com. Where are we? We are on webcache.googleusercontent.com. CVS.com yep. doesn't care for... Um, for the web cache. It doesn't have to because why would you use the web cache? There's cvs.com. It is pretty much always online because I'm pretty sure if their security team is this on top of their game, their ops team is probably too. 
So they don't want that. Another opportunity is that if there is a JavaScript here that would li like to load some content and expects to live on cvs.com, but now lives because living means we are in this context of the website. We are on webcache.googleusercontent.com. So the JavaScript that expects to be on cvs.com now finds itself running under a very different domain. And that breaks stuff all the time with JavaScript websites. Does it matter this is a problem? Absolutely not. Let's extract the actual, um, oh, this is literally just cvs.com's homepage, right? Yep. Let's go to mobile friendly test. If only I could type, man, that would be useful. Um, and we just go to HTTPS colon slash slash. Is it www? I don't know. Let's just go to that and see what happens. And uh, I apologize for the German. And uh, I swear it's not yelling at you. Um, and once that comes back. Why is it ah? Here we go. Then we can have a look at it. And the screenshot, you know, normally I tell people to absolutely ignore the screenshot because it's just for you to have something shiny to look at. But really interesting is the HTML. It has a lot of content. But you, you can copy paste out. Yes, exactly. Oh, and here, here is the content as well. So it works perfectly fine. Google search sees it when rendering. What it doesn't do is when we go through a website that isn't cvs.com or whatever website really, of course. Uh, it won't load. That's one of the reasons why this might not work. It's also, again, the JavaScript might expect to live on cvs.com and is now loading on webcache.googlecontent.com. Um, and again, breaks because it's in, living in an environment where it can't breathe. So, I mean, that makes all the sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, of course, of course, it's yeah. this way because, of course, you can't have being being loaded like all from all kinds of places yeah. because then of course it's spam or or, or malicious somewhere. and here's an interesting thing remember the website we saw we saw earlier that then jumped and went for uh, four, three forbidden yeah so that one has a piece of javascript somewhere that determines where am i running right now and oh, if that right. is not what it expects it just does a redirect it apparently does a redirect in a weird way but it mm. redirects us somewhere Oh, so, so, okay, geolocation yeah. determiner. No, 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 not even geolocation. More like, what's the URL that I live on right now? We can okay. because we can do that if we go back to our original. This article. isn't even my host name. <laughs> I close. I close this, but I go to. So where is it? So it's here somewhere. So this is a different website, and we ignore the fact that it. Is, what the hell is this? Why is this, what? <laughs> They change things and I don't like it. I'm in the. Are you picture, still streaming on like Twitch? And Twitch? Because I love when you. I was. I, I was all this commentary. I should. I should. I should come back to streaming on uh, on on Twitch, Twitch. I think. So if we have a thing here, we can do something funky, like we can um, pop out the window location href. So JavaScript is self-aware of where it runs. And if I do this, wow. then it tells us I'm running on this URL. So if I'm now opening this somewhere else, then it goes way, 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 way. This is weird. Actually, I haven't tried something, and I want to try this now. Um, I think a big key takeaway here when Martin types this in uh, is your security team is not the enemy. Something may seem cattywampus, but a lot of times that cattywampus thing has a very so good reason for being there. Ask her your questions. I'm creating an iframe here. I'm sorry that it's tiny, but this website really is not interesting because what all it does is it loads another website in an iframe. So I don't show you that. So uh, Simon, that when, once you like describe that. this to a five-year-old, because okay, you know, to a five-year-old manager, to a five-year-old. Okay, so if I have JavaScript as a little person, right? <laughs> and that little person doesn't know much, but it can look up and look what is written on a sign above it. And that sign happens to be the URL that we are on, right? That's the website that we visited. And it basically can look up and it can check if that's what it expects. So I, it knows, this little guy knows, hi, I'm example.com. 
And what it does to make sure that it's not being tricked or being moved somewhere else because it wants to be paid whenever it's moved somewhere else, for instance, then it basically just looks up first. So you go, hi, who are you? And the little guy goes, hi, I'm example.com and that's who I am and here's my service. And now if I go to Google search results and click in cash, what happens is that we have a copy of that little guy, a clone if you want to, but he now sits under a sign that says cash.google.com. And now this little guy, because it's an exact clone of the other guy, goes, hi, looks up, goes, wait. You're not I'm my host name. Com, but this is not <laughs> example.com. So what the hell is happening here? I don't want to talk to you anymore. I don't know that's you. My expect uh, that's my explanation for five-year-olds. I hope that that made sense. It was a I don't know. fantastic explanation. <laughs> we don't need to share the screen anymore. I don't have much to show right now. Sorry. Oh, you know what? We've been doing this. This was a full hour. I was having so much fun that I, I actually this lost time. It was a time. full hour. What the hell? It How, was a full hour. Happen? I don't know. We were having a lot of things like... to talk about. So. Oh, subscribe uh, to updates on Simon versus a five-year-old. Here for it. Well, marketing managers are usually older than five, so you want to make it age appropriate. But yeah. there are ways to make it age appropriate. Your creativity may flourish. Oh, puppet show. Oh yeah, puppet <laughs> show. Is not sure if that's we need age more. appropriate. I, I agree with you. Zillion questions in here. Holy moly! What yep, the hell? Yeah, yeah. I have great so questions. So honestly, this was maybe the best webinar ever that we could because we had no script or we had a script, but we did not follow it. <laughs> That's, that's Sorry, true. you're welcome. <laughs> it went sideways <laughs> after five minutes, and then everything happened. And uh, yeah, so and then we were all these people uh, chatting with us was fantastic. And like, awesome. That was, and then you had some singing as well. I mean, wait, I, I was singing? I don't recall that. <laughs> you had oh, a lot yeah, I, I was, I was yeah, waiting I for the, yeah, that's yeah. true. I waited for. <laughs> I waited for more. I really, really, tests. really, really so, love this. Next conference, someone's going to have it as a ringtone. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to be, uh, I want to actually give a huge, huge thank you to Duda to, to let us be silly on a webinar, doing our favorite topic of all times, <laughs> rendering. I mean, you need to love that. You need to love that. And thank you, Martin, for for being patient with us and, and asking or or and uh, answering all the questions that we had. I think happy to happy to yeah. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Jamie, also for for joining. Uh, really, really, really love that. And uh, for the fantastic questions, I really like those too. Fantastic questions. So yeah, good. thank you so much. And Come most of all, we'll thank you. Again. Yes, and. Um, Thank you, all of you who has been on this webinar, uh, putting out with us, being silly. <laughs> <laughs> we love you all. Um, Take care. Take care. Stay safe Thank and do you. some rendering. <laughs>